All right, we're going live. We're live. How you doing, everybody? Welcome to the show. It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. How are you guys doing today? Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're not too hot out there. Uh, watching yourselves, uh, staying inside and staying away from that really hot, humid weather here in Creston, British Columbia. The heat has arrived here too. Finally, we uh, we've been waiting now for weeks for the heat to start coming around, and it has finally shown. Uh, a little bit of a sign. Uh, we're just about, uh, oh, what will we be? We're approaching 80 now, 82. Uh, for us, that's starting to get warm. Uh, but um, we'll probably top out today at 85. And um, tomorrow, about 86, 87. So we're not quite in the high, high heat. But uh, we are looking at 10 straight days of pure sunshine here, according to my forecast going forward. Uh, I'm just looking at my my app here on my telephone. This is this is for Creston right here. It's all sunshine here. There isn't a cloud in the sky in the next uh, 10 days, and we're going to be in the 80s for the high, uh, all the way through probably the high 80s. So uh, that's about time for us. Uh, that's what we're supposed to have this time of year. The fruit here uh, that grows, the cherries, the uh, the uh, pears, the peaches, the plums, the grapes, so everything else we have growing here. Count on that heat to, uh, I guess, sweeten or ripen or whatever, you know, whatever the term is with regard to farming. I'm not an expert in it, but yes, things are coming along and uh, uh, summer is here. I know that where you, some are you, where some of you folks are, where some of you folks are, <laughs> it's awful. Uh, it is unbelievable. In Montreal, uh, apparently, here in Canada, Montreal, Quebec, which is 3,500 miles east of me. Um, 33 deaths in a week from the heat, 33 fatalities in, uh, in uh, Montreal and, and the Quebec region. It's unbelievable. For Canadians, we can't believe it. We're just going, are you kidding me? Uh, apparently a lot of, a lot of homeless, a lot of homeless, uh, uh, who don't have proper shelter are, uh, are having, uh, they have health issues as it is. And I guess the, the, uh, their, uh, their bodies are so weakened by this, you know, oppressive heat. Their immune systems just can't handle it, and uh, they're done for. It's unbelievable. So they've got emergency crews going everywhere trying to find people in their tr if they're in trouble, get them into shelters, and who knows what. So I don't know. It's it's crazy. Anyway, what can I say? Watch yourselves out there. Hydrate and stay cool. Do what I do. Uh, grab yourself a Traveling with Bruce coffee mug. Fill it with some caffeine-free Diet Coke or your favorite libation. And enjoy. Uh, that's one way to go. Cheers to everyone out there. Um, if you're wondering what this uh, channel is all about, <laughs> it's Traveling with Bruce. I'm Bruce, your host. Uh, we talk about cruise ships, cruise ship holidays, vacations, and general uh, travel-related issues as well. I love talking about airplanes, trains, and you name it. Um, and uh, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're addicted to cruising, you've come to the right channel. We love talking about cruise ships here. If you've never been on a cruise before, right channel right here. This is where you want to be. We talk about cruising. I don't mind questions at all. If you have any anybody out there is new and wants to know some information about cruise ships, cruise lines, ports of call, uh, rules and regs, uh, ships policies and stuff. By the way, uh, if I can't answer the question, my uh, my uh, viewers who are tuning in every day can. Uh, I got a bunch of folks who are signing in right now saying hi to me. Uh, I'm going to say hi to them in a minute. Um, my channel uh, uh, is now uh, almost ten months old. Uh, this being the fifth of July. Uh, in a week from now, uh, this channel will be 11 months old, 11 months coming up to a year. And uh, I started with uh, no subscribers, um, no experience, uh, no videos, uh, and not, not a you know complete clear idea of what I was doing. Uh, I was going to post videos about traveling with Bruce. That's, that was the title. I figured I'll go that way. And I found that uh, after a few months, uh, uh, most of the uh, most of my views and most of the interest in what I was doing was 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 surrounding cruise shipping, going on cruises, and so I kind of zeroed in on that area and uh, started live streaming in January. And I make live stream videos every day, Monday to Friday, five o'clock Eastern, Tuesdays, Thursdays. I throw in a second show, eight o'clock. So tonight there'll be a second show, trivia night tonight, and Saturdays at two p.m. Eastern time. I'm on as well, and so uh, I do those live shows and I make regular videos as well and. Uh, Posted a couple in the last week or so, and uh, and I'm getting a positive, a lot of positive feedback for those as well. So if you're looking for cruising, uh, if you're looking for cruising advice or you know how to pack for cruise or, or advice or tips on cruising, uh, mistakes you shouldn't make, uh, 
Uh, I have videos on that. So just check the channel out uh, all you like. Uh, hit the playlist button and you'll see all my playlists that I put together. And hopefully you'll find something that uh, interests you. Otherwise, just peruse and enjoy. Um, what was I going to tell you also? Uh, oh, just a shout out to, to, to those, of all, th those viewers of mine who have been uh, very, very supportive of my efforts. Um, this is my full-time gig, just so you know. I, I don't have a day job. This is my day job. Uh, I have folks out there who support me uh, by uh, picking up Traveling with Bruce merchandise. Uh, you can get TWB stuff like this, coffee mugs, and other items on the Redbubble store that I have. The logo, uh, well, there's a link down below in the description here, or there's a logo on my homepage on the upper right hand corner. Folks are coming to my Amazon uh, homepage. I have a link down below as well, an Amazon, uh, an Amazon affiliate link where if you want to buy something on Amazon and you use the affiliate link to get there, um, this channel gets a commission on anything you buy on Amazon. And thank you for a bunch of you who have been taking the time deliberately going to this link to go to Amazon because you know that uh, you're supporting Bruce on uh, on TWB if you pick up anything on, on the Amazon site. Thank you very much. Prime Day is coming. July 16th in 11 days, it is Prime Day. And there's a million items apparently going to be priced, at least a million items, at unbelievable discount prices. If you have not got your Prime membership, your Amazon Prime membership, you can get one for free uh, through my affiliate link down here. Just, just click that thing. You'll go to the homepage of Amazon. You'll see on there Prime uh, membership trial offers. If you click on there, uh, uh, you'll get it for nothing for 30-day free trial, which includes Prime Day. Take advantage of that. Uh, the other area of support, uh, folks have been sending me donations through pay my PayPal account, again, on the upper right-hand corner up here. Uh, folks have been sending me donations through PayPal, um, and I really do appreciate it. Uh, I know in the past, uh, about a month or two ago, about two months ago and earlier, uh, folks were sending me uh, uh, donations right through this live chat on the uh, Super Chat feature that YouTube has. I don't mind getting those, except that uh, when I did get a YouTube Super Chat, I would only get 70% of the proceeds. 30% goes to YouTube to collect the funds and uh, for a profit for themselves. Uh, if you're sending me a donation through my PayPal link up here, 94% um, of that comes to me, uh, at least. It, 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 it's uh, 90, 95. It's pretty good, and it's instantaneous. Um, it's, uh, it, you can do it anytime you want. Uh, you don't have to do it just on my live show. If you're watching this show tonight or tomorrow or a week from now or you know, watching this show three, I made this show three months ago and you're watching it, you want to help this channel out, you can do so through a donation and through my PayPal account. It comes to my account. I get an email alert from, from, uh, from, the, from my server telling me that you've got, some, you've got a donation through PayPal and um, um, whenever you, whatever amount you want to send and whenever, I appreciate it all. Thank you, everybody, for that. So I've got uh, multiple sources of income I'm trying to bring in to collectively cobblestone the living. Um, and of course, I've been remonetized by YouTube. This channel, this service, this entity, uh, took me 120 days to get remonetized after I got kicked out back in February. Uh, way too long to be off, but I'm back on again, and we seem to be averaging about four to five dollars a day in advertising revenues uh, on this channel. And so I, I thank all of you for watching because that helps. I thank all of you for donating. That helps. I thank all of you for picking up swag. That helps. And I thank, thank all of you for going to Amazon. That helps. And I have a couple of viewers who are helping me on Patreon because I am I have a Patreon page and a few folks are uh, pledging a monthly donation there as well. And I thank you too. So there you go. That's, that's everybody. And that's how I stay alive and keep going. Uh, I've got to keep growing this channel right now. I have 2,331 subscribers. Added another five in the last, I guess, 22 hours or so. Thank you for the new subscribers coming on board. Welcome aboard. And uh, hopefully that will continue to build uh, as time goes on. I'm going to say hi to everybody. If you've never been here before or, or you're just new, the folks here are signing in and saying hi to me. They're texting their hellos. Tell me, where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature going to be today? And uh, let's, uh, let's uh, have a chat and uh, we'll talk some travel today. Um, the first person today to sign in, let me just set up my phone here. The first person signing in today was Blaine at, uh, looks like 419 today. <laughs> he was in nice and early. Uh, hi, Bruce and all. He says 87 here in beautiful Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. That is fantastic weather. I know that's a lot better than it was not too long ago. It was quite a bit warmer than that. Peter Heckema uh, is also saying hi to me. Hi, Bruce and everyone. A beautiful day, about 90 degrees. We had a wonderful day yesterday out in the water, and we are looking forward to some trivia tonight. And trivia you will receive. I will be on tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern, for my second show, and I have trivia ready to go. Join me if you can. 
It's uh, a lot of fun. Robert Brent, hi Bruce, hi all. Uh, 85 in St. Thomas, uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, welcome back, Robert. Uh, love having you on the show. Uh, love your insights. Also from, uh, of course, from where you are and uh, and in general, it's fantastic. Wendy Thompson, how you doing, Wendy? Yeah, 95 today in Bland, Missouri. Hello, everyone. Uh, hi, Bruce. Uh, she's saying. Uh, and just as I saying hi to Robert, he sent me a PayPal donation. Robert, I just saw it. Thank you so much. I just caught that out of the corner of my eye. Wendy, how are you? You're in Bland, Missouri. Not for much longer. I know you're heading to Ocala area in Florida. You're about to become a Floridian. This is fantastic. Richard C., hello all. Still hot as heck on the East Coast. 91 Fahrenheit in a heat wave. Richard C., you and so many millions of others are in it. Uh, please be careful. Keep the fan going. Stay hydrated. Uh, keep cool, head for the basement, whatever you got to do, stay out of that oppressive heat. Wes Morrison, uh, hi there. No complaints about the weather in, in West Braunfels, Texas. We have received the rain that we needed so badly. Finally, he got some rain there. Fantastic, Wes. That makes it a lot more bearable for sure. Uh, Richard C., hi, Bruce. Glad you are back. I, I am back. <laughs> I'm gone anywhere. I'm here. Barry Stanton. Hello, Bruce. Hey, Barry. How are you, pal? Welcome to the show today. Paul uh, Wilgus is here. Hi, Bruce and all. 89 and extremely humid here in Virginia. Uh, Paul, welcome to the show. Uh, stay cool, my friend. You too, Barry. You take her easy out there. Uh, Yorick uh, Vagvon. Um, Yorick, what what are you saying? Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, Richard C. Don had a good video on small cruise ships today. It really depends on the ship's layout for crowding. It does, doesn't it, Richard C.? Um, you know, these older ships, uh, you remember, you know, back in the 80s and the 70s, you know, the old love boat versions, those ships are virtually gone um, there aren't many left really from that old time. And these ships now are much larger and, and much more smartly designed and laid out. Uh, and as the ships started hitting the 2000 passenger mark, the 2500 passenger mark, they were setting new standards in cruising back in the late nineties had never, we never had ships that big, uh, over 2500 passengers. So even the Q, the Queen Elizabeth, uh, you know, had two thousand odd passengers, and that was considered a giant. The SS France, the uh, the uh, the Norway, and so on. But um, as these ships got, you know, kept coming out in the nineties, the new technology and new design was in was uh, featured in there to maximize the space and handle the crowds as a whole. But um, today, uh, with multiple levels of balconies and um, uh, of course, now segregation as well. We have, you know, the top two or three floors of the front of the cruise ship are for the first class passengers or Haven Club or Sweet Club. What do you want to call them? First class. And then the rest of us in second class get the rest of the ship to enjoy. Uh, they have really done an amazing job in laying out the floor plans, the deck plans to handle 5,000, 6,000 passengers and up to 2,000 crew. It's incredible. Uh, um, I find it um you know, amazing. I was on the Epic, the Norwegian Epic myself, and that, that's about a 4,200 passenger ship. And uh, I never really felt, uh, you know, only a few times that I really feel, uh, you know, with a lot of other travelers. Um, there were a couple of design uh, issues with that ship, but all in all, uh, it, you, there were a lot of nooks and crannies you could enjoy on that cruise ship where you just didn't feel like you were with 5,000 other people comparing, you know, considering the crew. But uh, it's an it's an amazing thing how these uh, engineers have uh, you know figured out uh, uh, design of cruise ships to not only be functional <laughs> from from a you know seaworthiness point of view, but also functional from a hotel, resort, entertainment, and just the you know ha general handling of of people and uh, food and staff and uh, you name it. And of course, everyone's air conditioned. Everyone has fresh water to drink. Uh, the toilets always almost always work. It's amazing. It's just <laughs> these are floating cities. It is really something else. So Daisy Wagner, hi, Bruce and all. Back to work, she's saying. Oh, my goodness. Da uh, Tracy Dunlop, hi, Bruce and all. No, hi, 91 Fahrenheit in Naples. Uh, now starting to get our nightly rain and thunder and lightning. Dogs don't like it, I guess. Tracy, hang in there. Tom Henry, uh, hi, Bruce and all. 95 in Richmond, driving today. Uh, right on, Tom. Uh, Thomas Henry, guess what? I have in my hand here. You aren't watching it, but you're driving. I got an envelope in my hand here that was in my mailbox. Uh, yesterday afternoon after the show, I went to the mailbox and I got these USA stamps all over the top here and uh, this return address here for a Mr. Thomas Henry. I'm going to open this on the air. Uh, I'm quite looking forward to what's in here. So thank you for sending me a uh, an envelope. It came from uh, 
Uh, Richmond, Virginia. How about that? Uh, one and the same. Wendy McCullough. Hello, 93 in Southern Indiana. Hi, Wendy. Welcome back. Uh, Wendy Thompson's here too. Tracy, have you tried Thunder uh, Thunder shirts on the dogs? Have you tried Thunder shirts on the dogs? Oh, there's some advice from one dog owner to another. Seakeeper. Hi, Bruce and all. 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Muggy and storm clouds are moving in. No worries. I picked eight mangoes this morning. Mango cobbler for dessert tonight. Oh, man, man, thumbs up. The homeless are more at risk in the heat. You're right, my friend, they are. And mango co mango cobbler tonight. Oh, man. A <laughs> seakeeper, he's a baker. Uh, he makes food. Kathleen Krieger is here. Kathleen is saying hi, Bruce, and all 94 in Cloudy Day in Nashville. Hi, Kathleen. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for your support. I just saw your Patreon pledge come through at the end of the month. Uh, thank you so much for being a patron of my channel. It's wonderful. Richard C. is saying hi, Kathleen. Jim Thomas, hey, uh, hi, all. Uh, Bruce, 92 here in Redding, California today. Oh, man, that's hot, uh, hot, but it's a dry heat, uh, hopefully. Uh, Jim, how you doing, buddy? Um, let us know how Debbie's doing on that cruise ship uh, on the Bliss. Seakeeper, Bruce, do you have any celebration plans for the channel's first year anniversary? Um, nothing formal yet. I, I kind of want to come out with a commemorative uh, kind of shirt, though. I think I want to come up with some kind of a logo that commemorates the first anniversary of the show or of the channel, and uh, I'd like to get that on the mugs and, and the shirts and you know all that kind of stuff, but... I, I haven't uh, yet come up with anything. Uh, it's kind of well, it's early and not early. And, you know, I've got so much going on, but um, I'll be thinking about this. Robert uh, Brent, I wonder when Amazon uh, will buy a cruise line. Well, I can't wait because uh, <laughs> being being the entrepreneur, uh, wouldn't it be great? <laughs> You could buy a cruise through my uh, through my link. <laughs> I, I, I'd love that. But uh, I don't know, my friend. You never know. Uh, you, you never know. They may take over a, an online travel entity someday. And then you've got Amazon travel. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. Uh, Amazon credit cards, Amazon, you know, you name it. And uh, here we go uh, with all kinds of, uh, you know, other areas. I mean, they just went into the medical area. They, they bought a pharmaceutical company the other day. They're going everywhere. They're, why, why would they stop? It's incredible. Uh, I'll be watching that, Robert, for sure. Richard C., Amazon just bought a company that sells vacation kits uh, to go. Also a pill packaging company. See, there, there you go. Uh, incredible. Robert Brandt, Amazon is taking over. Oh, are they ever. Uh, Kathleen, uh, uh, Amazon is going to take over the world one day, she's saying. A seakeeper, oh, to be able to buy a cruise di directly through Amazon. Oh, oh, man. Kathleen, that would be the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Richard C. Yes, bought at five hundred dollars, sold at nine fifty. Now it's like sixteen hundred, and might buy it again with the drug system they're setting up. Oh my goodness, crazy! Rob Souter, um, Hybris eighty nine in Harrisburg, PA. Hey, Rob, stay cool out there. Uh, don't get caught in that heat out there. Tracy uh, Dunlop um, at Wendy Thompson. We have tried uh, two, uh, two out of three dogs doesn't like the thunder. One has a safe place in the half bath of the blanket. The other has a blanket over him. We, we use essential oils. And it helps. Uh, Wendy Thompson, we leave here in 10 days. Wendy saying she's moving in 10 days to Florida. Uh, Blaine, don't forget the thumbs up. 36 watching, only 14 thumbs ups. Blaine is looking for thumbs ups. Uh, people, please give me thumbs up. Tina Hote, hi, Bruce and all. 36 degrees in Toronto, 36 Celsius. Oh, man, that's 95. That is up there. A heat wave here. A heat wave is here. Thunderstorms on the way. Seventy-three days till Pride. Love the show. Thank you, Tina, for all your uh, support and and uh, your loyal following of my show. I love it. Robert Brandt, uh, Bezos wants to stay the richest man in the world. He, he's doing a good job at it, isn't he? Uh, and Jordan, a morning, Bruce and all. I just literally woke up, so I'm late. It's 25 Celsius in Brisbane today. Hope all is well. All is well, and except that it's hot here in North America. Uh, it has now spread uh, throughout practically all of North America. We had a, a terrible heat wave concentrated sort of on the eastern half of the U.S. and Canada, uh, but now it has spread, it spread west and it's now starting to come here. Uh, I'm still getting off very lightly uh, with only low 80s, uh, something like uh, 28 Celsius to 30 Celsius here, uh, whereas in Toronto, Ontario, 2,500 miles to the east, 36 Celsius and very high, humid as well. Very unbearable. Uh, Richard C. Ann, wonder where you were. Hello, he's saying, and Jordan's saying, sorry, I, I just woke up. <laughs> it's all good. Welcome, uh, welcome, man. Okay, I've caught up with everybody, and uh, I'm going to open up this envelope from Thomas Henry. This is an, uh, an unopening, uh, an unveiling right here on the air. 
uh, I got this. Uh, uh, Thomas told me, um, uh, Tom, Thomas Henry told me that he had sent this, uh, what, two weeks ago? And uh, date of sale, um, here we go, the 16th of June. Uh, you know, what are we talking about? That's 14 and, and five, that's 19 days ago. He bought the postage 19 days ago. And I finally got this envelope yesterday uh, in my mailbox. Also, it's 18 days. Unbelievable. And uh, let me just kind of open up this. I'll just open up this side right here like that. Here we go. Let's see what's in here. Uh, we've got we've got stuff. Here we go. Okay. Okay, here we go. There's the envelope. All right. Let's see what we have here. We have uh uh, <laughs> we have uh, we have a business card from uh, Thomas Henry James Limousine, right on Thomas Henry, uh, the owner James Limousine Service, Aniston Street, Richmond, Virginia, and on the back, driven to serve. How about that? Nice, thank you, sir. Got me a business card there, and oh, look here, look here. I uh, got me a photo. Uh, here we go. Yeah, one smiling guy right there. Um, it says here. Uh, uh, NCL star Miami uh, to Barcelona. Tom Henry. He was on the uh, NCL star from November, uh, from the fourth of April to the fifth, the uh, sixth of uh, May, on on that cruise. So he sent me this photo of him smiling. Uh, I'd be smiling if I were on that ship too on that cruise. And here we go. Uh, Norwegian uh, MS Norwegian star Captain Matthias Anderson. Here we go. We have the uh, we have the Thomases here. Uh, Miami, uh, Tom and Cindy Henry with captain of the star. Fantastic. Uh, great shot there. Good looking captain there. And, uh, here we have one more shot and another shot here. What do we got here? Uh, oh yeah, this is it. <laughs> okay. This is where, uh, where Thomas, he, he's holding his winnings. Remember he won, he won on that, on that game that, 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 uh, I don't know if I can get the glare out of there. I'm trying to get it up. There we go. A little better there. He's got that thing around his neck there, the lanyard holding all those uh, twenty dollar bills. Uh, I think it was the day before this uh, happened. I think it was ta talking about cruise ships, casinos, where you, you, the odds are stacked against you big time. And uh, those machines where they have those mich those dollars, you have to put the key in there and get it to fit. Don't play those. That's what he wanted. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and here we are. Uh, we've got uh, the Thomases having dinner on the Star. Uh, in in the bistro how about that nothing wrong with that action very nice thank you sir very much he's even got a norwegian shirt on too man tom you you're decked out there that's fantastic all right now what do we got we got here hope to see a pick on your wall uh oh yeah well yeah i'll, I'll definitely have one of those up there you darn right i will uh so you just a little hi how are you there and then here's a little envelope and inside this envelope i think there is a some kind of a plasticky thing here let me pull this out uh, let's see here. Bruce and Joy, uh, he says, uh, let's see here. Bruce and Joy. And it looks like, oh, it looks like we've got us. We have a Costco cash card here. How about that? Look at that. Let me just peel this off here. Here we go. Folks. Look at that. I got me a Costco cash card. Looks like I'm heading to Costco on Saturday. <laughs> to good late, I know. Uh, there's a chicken bacon my future and there's a hot dog in Jen's future, at least uh, here. Uh, it looks like the receipt says 50 bucks, a $50 cash card. How about the thank you, Thomas, so much for this and everything you do and all of your support, uh, moral and otherwise. I love it, and I love the fact that you're uh, posting on the um, Facebook page, uh, Traveling with Bruce. Uh, you, you posted a bunch of photos on there, and you're an active participant. I just love it. I thank you so much, loyal follower that he is. I finally got that. Uh, finally got that uh, envelope uh, after I don't know, almost well more than two weeks. I was really surprised it took that long, but I guess it's worth the wait. Isn't that fantastic? Thank you very much, sir. That is absolutely wonderful. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, uh, we will, we will make use of that Costco cash card. Believe me, we're low on provisions. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, Let's see here. Uh, I just want to check with my messages, catch up with everybody here. Uh, uh, yeah, let's go here. Um, hang on one moment, folks. I've got to catch up here. Um, here we go. That was Tina's message. And then uh, I have Ann Jordan, and I now have a uh, Seakeeper. When we mail something to Canada, he says, we the U.S. Post Office informs us it takes two days to reach the border. 
and then after that, it's anyone's guess how long, uh, you know, Port Canada will warehouse the mail, laugh out loud. Robert Brandt, in the casinos, only play games of skill, blackjack, et cetera, versus games of chance. They are not regulated on the machines, and the odds are far worse uh, than land-based casinos. Uh, you've got that right. I'm a good card player. I, I hear you there, uh, Robert. It's absolutely true. Uh, Richard C. Lots of hot dogs at Costco. Yeah, that's right. That's what we got going here. Robert, man, Brent, I, I mail things to the U S and it only, it, it, and it takes two weeks to, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. I used to, uh, this back in the nineties, way back in, in the mid nineties, uh, it was, is that right, Bruce? No, no, sorry. Uh, back in, uh, early 2000. Yeah. When I was living in, uh, Palm desert, uh, I did a little eBay work for a while, a little out of my, uh, condo was renting there and uh, sending stuff to Canada. It was just terrible. Oh, the complaints and the people were just wondering well, how much longer, how much longer. And of course we couldn't give tracking numbers because they didn't have it through, through the border in those days. It was terrible. Uh, Rob Souter, he should have mailed it to Costco. You would have gotten it in three days. Oh, well, <laughs> he wanted to send me this, these photos as well. So obviously it was all one package, but uh, it doesn't matter to me. Tom Henry, I was beginning to think the mailman kept your Costco card. That was a long trip. Uh, Tom, you're right. I, I, I was wondering, geez, you know, did that, that, that uh, all will get intercepted by somebody. What's going on here? But uh, it made it unbelievable. Um, everyone's laughing out loud. Uh, we're. I'm just. So, I'm just pleased. And, and pleased as punch. Thank you again for for everything. That's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the mails. Uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, you know, from uh, from here. You know, it, it, it's kind of crazy. I mean, I can mail something from here to you guys in the U.S. from my post office. Or I can drive it across the border and put it in the post office there. But if I drive it across the border, I have to declare what I'm bringing across the border. Uh, they ask you, uh, they almost always ask us, uh, are you leaving anything behind? Are you bringing anything across the border that you're going to leave behind? And you have to declare what it is. Now, if it's a personal letter, they won't care. But if I'm sending you an item, like if I'm sending you one of these medallions here or one of these necklaces, uh, I have to declare that. And it's a discretionary call whether they want to do anything about it. Uh, generally, I don't think they care too much, but uh, I, I hate the hassle of it. You know, I just hate it. But what are you going to do? Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> let's see what we got here. Uh, a couple of uh, um, points that I was just going to bring up today. I came up with some travel uh, travel facts around the world that I thought I'd share with you guys. Um, it's kind of a slow day, news day, as far as cruising goes. I was looking for uh, cruise updates to see what was going on. Um, uh, Robert here is asking, how do we mail you things? Robert, down below in the description on this channel. Every time I post a video, uh, if you just look at the description down below, I have my address posted in there. Uh, my mailing address is there. My email address is there, personal email. Uh, the links to Amazon, the links to Redbubble are all in there as well on every video I do. So after this show is over, this video will be officially posted on Facebook with a full description and a thumbnail and all of that. So if you watch and you go to my any of my videos that I've made in the last month, uh, just click the you know, click to start the video and uh, look down below the, where the description of the video is and just scroll up a bit. As you scroll through, you'll see my mailing address in Creston. You send me anything you want. Send me a postcard, uh, whatever you guys want to send me. And Jordan, uh, hey, uh, hey, Peter, uh, uh, she's saying hi to everybody. Good morning to all. Uh, and everyone's saying hi to Anne. Tracy Dunlop, that's wonderful, Thomas. Great picks and a nice to keep Bruce and Jen fed with Costco hot dogs and chicken bakes. Absolutely. <laughs> Keeps us going. Uh, everyone is happy, and uh, Robert is saying, "Okay, thanks, Bruce. Got it. Uh, I can find you at least there." A couple of travel facts from around the world. I, I was, like I said, I was looking up this morning information on, you know, is anything going on in the cruise business? And uh, the the uh, the uh, news pages, you know, are, are still talking about the cruise member that was recovered uh, in the Caribbean who was in the water for 21, 22 hours. Uh, but it's the same story, just regurgitated and regurgitated. Every news outlet has picked up that story 25 times over. There's nothing new. The, the story is uh, three sentences long, four sentences long. They don't reveal who it is. They don't reveal why. They don't reveal where he is. They don't reveal what's going to happen to him. Uh, nada, because no one's talking. Uh, there is no information available on this guy. This individual is under contract with Norwegian. And uh, the deal, I think, is uh, he will be um, – you know, He'll be in, he's, he's in the hospital, he's in the hospital. Once he's out, um, he will be immediately flown home. Um, he will be out of the, uh, if he's in the U.S. at all, he'll be out of uh, North America uh, without it, even getting in front of a microphone. He won't be able to talk to anybody because he's still technically employed by this company. But he will be flown home. Once he's flown home, he's out of a job. I, I, um, I'm certain that he'll be paid out, and uh, that'll be that. Um, uh, the investigation is ongoing uh, uh, internally. 
at Norwegian, but they'll never reveal to us why he jumped, what caused him to want to jump, how did it happen, uh, because it can't be good. <laughs> just, just How can it be a happy story? Uh, he was loving his job and he jumped into the ocean to celebrate? No. <laughs> So something something caused this to happen, and uh, obviously the first thing they're checking is to see if anyone assisted him uh, and involunt involuntarily put him in there, um, and then they go from there. So I'm sure there's a lot of investigation going on, but none of this is positive for any cruise line, and so you're not going to hear a thing about it uh, from here. This story will fade into oblivion like countless others we've heard in the last, what, six, eight months. We've heard so many instances of people falling overboard jumping overboard, disappearing at sea, whether it's passengers or whether it's crew members. And within a month of that event happening, you hear nothing. There is nada. Uh, it just disappears into the ether. And the media is just interested in the sensationalism of it, the, the, the initial shock of it, and then they don't care anymore. They, they go back to following Donald Trump or whatever's going on out there. That's just how it works. Um, and Jordan, Costco dogs are great. They are. Robert Brandt, guys, burgers with donkey stuff. They're good too. Robert Brandt, assisted, assisted is a PR way of suggesting it. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. You caught the drift. Uh, laughing out loud, he's going. And Jordan, I haven't uh, tried those, uh, Robert Brandt. Hope they are great. Uh, yeah, the guys, burgers. So, oh, man, they're I'd like to try some myself. Uh, Robert Brandt, the crew get in fights. Have you seen the space they get? Oh, yeah, it's it's unbelievable. There's a whole world down there, whole hierarchy of, of existence down below that we don't get to see, we don't know anything about, and it's a whole other thing. And uh, there's turf down there, and there are certain things that certain people do in the off hours. Um, entrepreneurial, or entrepreneurially speaking, I'm talking about, you got guys down below who offer haircuts who offer shoe shine, who offer tailoring services, uh, who offer, uh, there's people downstairs or down below who are, you know, working as cabin stewards or whatever, but they're actually full blown masseuses that, you know, back home, they can do, they, they're, they're licensed to give a massage. And so they're offering uh, crew members massages, people getting haircuts down there. Uh, I ripped my pants or, or I need some ta tailoring. They, they sew buttons back on for a fee. There's all kinds of stuff going on down there. It's a whole world. There's, upwards of 2,000 people down below deck that uh, live there. And uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. Sports betting going on. I'm sure there's card playing going on. Oh, all kinds of stuff. Um, anyway, that's a whole other world that we're not exposed to. Uh, Robert, I've been down there. Uh, I tend to get to know the bartenders laugh out loud. Yeah, you would, Robert. You supplied them the booze. Seakeeper, is that donkey sauce made from real donkeys? <laughs> no comment. No comment. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you get, you ever get a chance to go down there, and you, 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 you know, you can get to meet these people. You said betting, ding, ding. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's betting. And you got to wonder, um, does it happen from time to time that a crew member gets in over his head and, uh, owes a whole lot of money and doesn't know how they're going to get out of it. Uh, they got a, you know, 10 month contract. They have three months left to go. And even at the end of three months, they'll still owe their bookie money. Uh, some of these folks decide to, uh, I'm not going to pay this. I'm just going to jump. Uh, you, you don't know, you don't know, uh, people get a dear John email from home and, uh, boy, that just sets them off. You never, you know, it can be a million different things, right? Uh, life is life. People are people. It's just the way it is. Uh, traveling facts from around the world. Here's one for you. Saudi Arabia has no rivers. <laughs> How about that? There's no, there are no rivers in Saudi Arabia. It's just desert sand. Uh, but you'd think that in that entire landmass that Saudi Arabia is on, that there would be a river somewhere, but there, there's no river in Saudi Arabia. Um, did you know that in the United States, on average, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, doesn't matter, on average, 61,000 people are in the air in the United States in an airplane. 61,000 people are in the skies over the United States, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the time. That that. That's incredible. Now, of course, the middle of the night, I'm sure it's lower. Middle of the day, it's higher. But the average is 61,000 at all times. That's you just think about that and go, wow, that's you know, wow, it's really something. And then I think about how uh, a typical airplane might hold 100 to 150 people because we're not talking about necessarily just jumbo planes or just small 24 people commuter planes. So I'm thinking if it's 100 people per plane on average, even with the crew. You do the math, and what do you got? 610 airplanes in the air at all times, 24-7 in the USA, all the time. It's amazing. It's just, it's just an amazing figure. 
uh, sea keeper uh, playing my Zhang in the Chinese laundry. Bring a checkbook. Uh, Tracy Donlop, uh, what's Taki sauce? Robert Brandt, yes, it's it's made with Taki. Robert Brandt, it's just uh, hot sauce, I guess. That guy has a patent or something on, but it's it's very good. Sea keeper, I love goat curry, so I would try that too. Wow, some exotic tastes here. Fantastic stuff. Did you know that Indonesia, the country of Indonesia, has 127 active volcanoes? What? <laughs> I didn't know that. 127 active volcanoes in Indonesia. That I, I'm amazed. I mean, in the United States, uh, there's Mount St. Helens and Mount Hood and, uh, you know, a couple of hurricane uh, volcanoes. And then in Hawaii, you got the one on the big island. You got the one. 127 in Indonesia, active volcanoes. Wow, I thought Iceland was active. That is incredible. Uh, man, some of them are monsters, of course. Uh, did you know that, um, that in Switzerland, the average person eats 22, 000, 22 pounds of chocolate a year? <laughs> some of the sweetest people I know from Switzerland, I'll tell you right now, um, 22 pounds of chocolate a year consumed by the average Switzerlander, the average Swiss national. Isn't that amazing? Uh, Robert Brandt, I'm I'm sitting 500 feet from one that is active but hasn't blown in a thousand years. There you go. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. Uh, as far as that goes in the in St. Thomas, uh, where Robert is, unbelievable. 22 pounds of chocolate a year. I I I would you know I and Jen we we do our share here in Canada to try to you know make a a national run at the t at the number, but that's that's incredible. Twenty that's like two pounds a week. That's a half a pound. No, two, two pounds a month, half a pound a week. Wow. Uh, so Tracy Dunlop might not be any rivers in Saudi, but g gorgeous beaches with lots of sand dunes. There you go. Uh, there is probably some. I'm sure there's stunning scenery in Saudi Arabia. That's a huge piece of land they have there. And Jordan, uh, Jordan uh, saying hi. Morning, Tracy. How you doing? Uh, let's see what else I got here. Um, of all the lakes in the world, of all the lakes on the planet, Canada has 60% of all the lakes in the world. We got the fresh water here. Isn't that something? Amazing. You think uh, Minnesota talks about the land of a thousand lakes, you know, that, they got something to brag about. 60% of all the lakes in the world are in Canada. Uh, Robert Brandt, the Swiss and Belgians do make the best chocolates. Oh, man, it's good stuff, isn't it? Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Seakeeper Andrew Zimmerman. Andrew Zimmer, Zimmerman has nothing on me. I will try anything, and I like it. Swiss chocolate, in my opinion, is good, but not the best. I have to move to Belgium. That, yeah. I, I'll, I'll give him second place and settle for it, but uh, I don't mind Belgian chocolate either. Uh, I like Canadian chocolate. I like American chocolate. I just like chocolate. Uh, Robert Brandt, I need to get to Canada. <laughs> Yeah, 35, 36 million people now in Canada, a uh, country that's 5,000 miles wide. That's what's that? 8,000 kilometers wide. <laughs> uh, and uh, how high do we go? Gosh, uh, it's got to be 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 kilometers high at least. So we cover a huge amount of space. Unbelievable. Robert Brandt, I need to get to Canada. Tracy Dunlop, morning, Ann. Are you awake now? Robert Brandt, I've been uh, a lot of places but never to Canada. Wow. Yeah, this is an amazing country. It's uh, just like the United States. Uh, there's so much to see. I mean, you've got the East Coast, the West Coast, the Middle. Uh, you have the mountains, the prairies. Uh, you have the uh, the uh, you know Ontario, um, Quebec with the French culture. I mean, we just have you know so many countries in one. It's quite quite amazing. Pretty cool place. Um, let's see here, Monaco, the country of Monaco, where Monte Carlo is located, where they have the Formula One race. Um, the Monaco, uh, Monaco Grand Prix, I guess, Monaco has 38,000 people that permanently live there year round. They live in an area, their entire country, okay, the whole country is smaller than Central Park in New York, in Manhattan. It's less land than Central Park takes up. 38,000 people live there, and it's one of the, one of the highest demographic residences in the world um the uh, the amount of money you need to live in monaco year-round is substantial um there are uh, i'm sure there are a few poor people who live there but uh generally speaking those who choose to live in Mo um, monaco um for tax reasons and other reasons quality of life being another one 
Um, they're in a, and they're in a landmass that's smaller than Central Park, and thirty eight thousand are there. That's an amazing, uh, an amazing uh, uh, tip. Um, uh, Robert Brandt, I like the USA without Trump. <laughs> sea Keeper, if it doesn't melt in your fingers, don't bother tasting it. it, it that, that's not real chocolate. Uh, let's see. It's a chocolate not worth tasting. Steaming bean in Toronto. Flight to Montreal canceled. Oh, no. Steamer, this is crazy. Uh, I know you're getting you're early, though. You're not on your cruise tomorrow or anything like that. But, oh, my gosh, Steamer, that's ridiculous. Are you going later? Uh, morning Bean, uh, Anne is saying, uh, Blaine, uh, love Canada. Been to Medicine Hat in Alberta. I believe it was called. Yes, uh, Medicine Hat, Alberta. That's five hours, five and a half hours by car from here. Um, Seakeeper, uh, hey, Bean. Uh, Richard C., uh, Bruce, any plans to take a Northern Passage cruise across Canada? They started like two years ago. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a dicey one in a way because um, if cruise lines wanted to do that on a regular basis, they're going to need permitting to go through there because, uh, God forbid, there is an issue, an incident with a ship uh, having mechanical issues or anything like that uh, because the nearest dry dock could be a two-week tow away from there. And if you're stuck late in the summer and you can't get tow, tow units up there for two or three weeks and then you got to get them out, it might be too late to get out because of the ice. Uh, now you've got another issue, a trapped cruise ship that might get crushed by ice, ice flows. Not a good idea. Uh, so it, it's one of those things that may happen someday. But I doubt we'll see it with traditional cruise ships on an average basis. I know there was a special cruise just a little while ago. It was kind of one of those one-off things. Uh, it was a princess cruise, I believe, if I can recall. But um, I think these ships have to be icebreaker quality to be allowed up there. Um, and the insurance companies, uh, I'm sure uh, these insurance companies who insure these vessels, they won't allow these guys to operate regularly scheduled services up there unless the ship is capable of handling uh, ice flows, uh, that kind of thing. That that would be uh, my thinking. Robert Brandt, I've been to Monte Carlo. Did you know the locals cannot gamble in the casinos? I did know that. Uh, that is true, Robert. If you're um, uh, if you're from Monte Carlo, if you go into the uh, casino in Monte Carlo, you have to show your passport when you walk in there. They want to see your passport to be sure that you are not a local. If you want to gamble as a uh, Monte Carlo resident, leave the country. And go to France or go to Germany. There are casinos there. Go to Spain. And you can gamble all you want, but you cannot gamble in your home country. They won't allow it. The uh, principality uh, has decided they don't want to have a gambling issue with its own residents. They don't mind foreigners losing their shirts, <laughs> but they don't want their locals losing it. The locals work in the casinos, uh, and some of them make a lot of money. So how about that? The Steaming Bean still headed to Montreal for a football game against Ottawa. Oh, right on, buddy. Uh, interesting stuff. And Jordan, thumbs up. So the steamy bean headed out tomorrow at 6.30 in the morning, he's saying. Rob uh, Souter, I know this is going to hurt, Bruce, but I get my Costco dogs in St. Catharines, Ontario. 35% cheaper and only 30 minutes from home. Well, hey, it's all it's all good, Rob. It's all good. Um, you know, when I go to Calgary to visit our daughter, we have Costco's there, and I pay $1.50 Canadian. And then when I head to uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, I pay $1.50 American. I, I hear you. It's the way it is, but. Buck and a half American for a dog and a drink, still a good deal. Uh, Richard C., uh, Robert Brandt, four more years. <laughs> oh, gosh. A steamer uh, watching, uh, traveling with Bruce at the uh, gate, uh, B2A uh, in Toronto. Well, a steamer, while you're there, uh, show off the channel to everybody around you, you know, and, and build up my subscriber base. You know, help me out. <laughs> Find some cruisers. Oh, man. I guess, Steamer, are you going to go from Montreal eventually and then going to head to the States from there to catch your ship? Is that the plan? Let us know. Jim Thomas, looks like Deb Emanuel is just over halfway uh, back to Victoria, Canada. She sent me uh, sent me a message because her trip was half over. Oh, she sent me a sad face because her trip is half over. So, yeah, she's on her way down. I guess it's day five or something like that because uh, Saturday – uh, time to get off the ship. Um, unfortunately, that's day after tomorrow. It's all over. Uh, yeah. And Jordan, have a great football game, a steamer. Uh, Richard C., the steaming bean. Sorry, bean. Hope your flight goes well. Robert, Robert is saying, uh, Richard C., uh, he's done nothing to help here or Puerto Rico for sure. Florida and Texas got fast money, but uh, down in uh, the, uh, the territories, uh, they're hurting down there. Uh, and they feel it. Michelle Lucas, uh, hi there, clam. Uh, Michelle Lucas, she's saying clam digging. On the Oregon coast, 63 degrees, seen no cruise boats going by yet. Uh, <laughs> I guess they're a bit further offshore. They're, they're out of sight. But welcome, Michelle. Say hi to Randy for us. 
63 degrees, you're avoiding the heat for sure. Uh, Wendy Thompson is saying we would see Canada uh, from the Sioux Locks, the Sault Ste. Marie Locks, or drive along, along Lake Superior to Whitefish Point up to Paradise uh, in, in Michigan. Uh, you can watch the ocean-going vessels go through the Sioux, Sioux St. Marie locks. Uh, yep, on the other side, it's Canada. Exactly right. Robert Brandt, the um, Mon... What is this? Uh, <laughs> Robert Brandt, the Mon... Mon, I guess, Mon Monagasts want to stay rich and not lose their wealth. They want everyone else's money. Well, yeah, you know, the rich get richer. That's the point. And Jordan, hey, Michelle. Jim Thomas, what kind of clams are you digging there, Michelle? And Richard C. Uh, at Robert Brent, U.S. Corps of Engineers rebuilt the power grid from scratch that that the local economy never put any money up or keep up to it all for free. Well, yeah, they didn't rebuild it entirely. Uh, they, uh, they are trying to get the main lines up, but a lot of the local stuff... Uh, the power rates in uh, Puerto Rico are the highest in uh, the Western world, I believe. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, there are billions more required uh, to finish it off. It's I don't know if it'll ever get done. West Morrison, the shortest river in the world is the Comal River in New Braunfels. The river is two and a half miles long and is spring-fed from the Comal Springs, 8 million gallons an hour. How about that? I think there's some trivia for us from West Morrison. Thank you, sir. New Braunfels, Texas, a sea keeper. The Northwest Passage is dicey at best. You had best book one of those nuclear-powered Russian icebreakers. I, I would love it. Yeah, they, uh, uh, it's, it is dicey. It looks great today, and then the wind shift, and it's not great anymore. Uh, Robert Brandt, fake news. Richard, they came here and advised uh, what needed to be done, and then they left. <laughs> a sea keeper, Bean, get yourself a poutine in Montreal, as, as we said. Robert Brandt, it's simple. The uh, U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico cannot vote in the presidential election. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, what president would care? It's unbelievable. Why do Republicans, Democrats not care? They don't have to. There's nothing at risk for them. It's unbelievable. Blaine, hey, I need to run real quick, but I will see you all tonight at 8 Eastern time. Be there or be square, ready for trivia. See you there, Blaine. 8 o'clock, we'll be back on for trivia tonight. Richard, see um, Robert Brandt. Oh, nope, our company sent crews down there. Didn't even take soil samples when putting poles up. No wonder the system crashed. Oh, well, I'll fix it later. Unbelievable. Tracy Dunlap, uh, Robert Brent. No, no, no. Four more years. No, no, no. No more for me. No. Uh, Sylvia Hybris, 90 and cloudy in Greensboro. Hi, Sylvia. Robert Brandt seems a pro-Trump room. <laughs> I don't want to get in politics. Uh, see you, uh, Blaine, uh, 2007 trivia. It will be awesome, Anna Singh. Robert Brandt, come here and show me what the U.S. did. Uh, Sylvia heard that Car Carnival will not be going to Europe anymore. Sylvia says, heard that Carnival will not be going to Europe anymore, she said. Mm, I haven't heard that. Uh, we'll have to see what the rumor are, are about that. Of course, Carnival is in Europe with Cunard, Costa Cruises, Ada Cruises. Uh, they own P&O. Uh, they've got a huge presence in Europe through their other lines. May not need Carnival's brand to be there. I don't know. And Jordan, uh, seen any more soccer games? Um, and Jordan, uh, morning, Sylvia. Rob Sutter, Bruce, they used to have cruises on the Great Lakes. Do you know if they still have them? Uh, they do, uh, but the ships, are, of course, are small, um, and they're privately uh, run, and it's like some one cruise line has one ship, another cruise line has one maybe here. There's no consistency to it, no national marketing program, and that's why we don't hear about it. Uh, and I would imagine it's incredibly expensive. I can imagine that the costs, the regulations – the U.S. regulations, the Canadian regulations, the licensing, the insurance, the permitting, and the fact that you have to adhere to North American labor standards would be prohibitively expensive. You'd be talking 500 a night per person to be on a cruise ship in the, on the Great Lakes. Is there any wonder their big companies aren't there? You now you know. Uh, they, they, it's impossible. Uh, Robert Brandt, I'm not political, but 10 months later, is Texas or Florida begging for help? <laughs> Richard C. and Jordan starts on Friday. Soccer begins again on Friday. Uh, that'll be great, and Jordan is saying. <clears throat> Let me see what other uh, little tidbits of uh, nuggets of news I've got here, nuggets of information. Um, did you know that Russia provides the world's uh, most oxygen? The Most of the oxygen produced in the world is produced in Russia. Did you know that? The Siberian uh, forests, the forests in Siberia. Uh, China, the Great Wall of China is 13,000 miles long. How about that? A little trivia note there. That is something. And it wasn't built yesterday. <laughs> it was built way back by hand and the deck, obviously decades. Isn't that incredible? 13,000 miles. Uh, Susan Hoffman, no politics. This is our happy place. Uh, good morning, Ed. 
says Sylvia. Kathleen, I saw that news story too about Carnival not cruising Europe anymore. Ah, I'll be looking into that. Uh, uh, again, I have a feeling that uh, they're probably more interested in Australia, Asia, South America, North America, uh, and they'll leave Europe to their regular brands. That that would be my uh, would be my guess. Cheers, everybody. We'll see what uh, we'll see what that story is like as it uh, as it goes forward. I don't think it's an earth shattering story. Twenty six thumbs ups. Thanks, you guys. Got twenty six thumbs ups. This is great. Um, <clears throat> what other nugget of information have I got here for you? Um, Finland has about one hundred and eighty thousand islands. How about that? Finland has 180,000 islands, actually more than that. The, the, the world's most unbelievable, 180,000 islands in Finland. I'm sure some of them are tiny. I mean, really tiny. Uh, maybe canoe size, <laughs> enough for a canoe to go to. Uh, the Greek national anthem, here's one for you. Uh, you want to sing the Greek national anthem from beginning to end? Oh, man, you better eat food before you start singing. You better go to the bathroom before you start singing, and, and you better rest your vocals because it has 158 verses. The Greek national anthem, 158 verses. Oh, man, can you imagine, uh, uh, you know, if the Olympics had a rule that says uh, that when the games come to a, your host country that you have to play your entire national anthem, you'd be standing there for free, like for three hours listening to that thing. That's crazy. Uh, that's ridiculous. 158 verses? Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's nuts. Um, Robert Brandt, 180,000. Wow, yeah, 180,000 islands. Uh, we have a lot of here, but. Many are very, very small. I think the same thing in Finland. Many of those 180,000 islands are puny, but 180,000 of them, somebody counted them. Uh, a bur bureaucrat? I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, San Marino. The country of San Marino is is located in Italy. It's, it's landlocked. It's right inside Italy. They have a population of 33,000 people. San Marino does. It's its own country. It's an old fiefdom, I guess. But here's the stat that uh, shocks people. Uh, they have 33,000 people. They have more cars. <laughs> there are more than 33,000 cars in San Marino than people. Uh, how, how is that possible? Uh, what, what, are they all running? Are they junkers? What's the deal with that? Can they not get, they, maybe they can't get rid of their old cars. Maybe that's the problem. 33,000 people and more cars than people in the landlocked San Marino. Unbelievable. At least they're mobile. You know, they get, get around. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, Robert Brandt saying, don't worry, Bruce, the Greeks can't, can't afford to hold an Olympics anytime soon. So we won't have to worry about the, uh, the 158 verse national anthem getting in the way. <laughs> what about if they win a gold medal? If somebody wins a gold medal and they got to perform the anthem. We don't want to hear that. Do we? Oh my, just, just sing the, do the first verse and like get it over with. Come on, give us a break. Wow. Uh, <laughs> oh, crazy. All right. Norway, the electricity made in Norway, 99% of it is, uh, from hydro. 99% of all of Norway's electricity is from hydro. And uh, I, can, I can see that because we see these cruise pictures, you know, these fantastic pictures where, where they have these cruise ships going into the fjords and they go way in there. And the fjords are like 1,000 feet up, 1,500 feet up with the spectacular waterfalls coming down. I mean, the amount of water flowing out of uh, Norway into the Atlantic is just incredible. I can see where 99% of their electricity is from hydro. And of course, they also have they have solar, but they also have wind power. A lot of that too, quite amazing. Um, Tracy Dunlop at Robert DeBrant. I, I meant no, no, no more four more years. Not not pro forty five here. I have family in Puerto Rico. I don't want another four years of this guy. No, no. And Jordan, it was so sad all around with crew and passengers while at sea. It's so sad all around with crews and passengers while at sea. I, I, I don't know what you mean, Joe. Cool jazz. Question is, how many people know the words to the Greek anthem? I mean, how many know this? 158. I mean, did the guy who, the guy or the girl or the people who wrote all those verses out, do they remember them? I, I don't think so. You ever, ever notice when you when you talk to you see a, a Hollywood actor being interviewed, like, uh, oh, you, you name the actor, Tom Hanks or whatever, and they the interviewer will say, oh, I loved it when you did the movie called So and So, and the actor goes, oh, thanks, that's great. Uh, do you remember the scene? In the, and the actor goes, no, I don't. <laughs> Remember the scene. <laughs> For us, uh, you know, it's a memorable scene in Apollo 13, or it's a memorable scene in Saving Brian Ryan. Tom Hanks is going, look, guys, I I've done 60 movies. Um, I have to learn the line one time for that one take, <laughs> and then I can forget about it because I got the other 200 pages of script to memorize for the rest of the show. 
Uh, and I don't like watching myself when I, you know, once I get the movie done, it's over. I get it out of here, get on my life, because I'm getting on my next movie now. And right now, after this interview, I got to go back home and memorize a 200 line script or page script for my next movie. I don't want to go back and look at my movies from 30 years ago and try to remember what scene you liked. Uh, they don't care. Uh, and can you blame them? Uh, why should they care? And I did see something the other day that that uh, that uh, really uh, tickled my funny bone. It was uh, it was a video on uh, Netflix about Back to the Future, about the making of the movies Back to the Future. And they had on this uh, like a documentary kind of show. They were interviewing a lot of the actors, the writers, the camera crew people, directors, studio executives, talking about how the movie got made and and how it got cast and all this sort of stuff. Great story because they did all three movies over a certain number of years. And they had Michael J. Fox on there, and then they had uh, uh, his uh, the, the 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 gal who played his mother was on there, and the, and his girlfriend, the first the first girlfriend in the first movie, Jen, Jennifer, yeah, Jen. Uh, and then they talked to people who who have DeLoreans today, and uh, they talked to the guy that owns the little pickup truck that Marty always wanted, that black little four by four that he wanted. They talked to the guy who owns it. And on it went. Anyway, um, the uh, the point I was going to make, um, desperate trying to remember it. Oh yeah, Mayor Goldie Wilson. Remember Mayor Goldie Wilson? Uh, there was a scene in the movie where uh, where uh, Marty meets his father for the first time at the uh, soda fountain, <clears throat> and uh, Goldie Wilson says, "I'm going to make my, I'm going to become something in this town." And he says, "Yeah, that's right. You're going to be mayor." Well, the actor, the actual actor that played that part. Uh, you look at him today, you wouldn't recognize him because in the movie, of course, he had the short cropped hair because it's 19, supposed to be 1955. Uh, he's got the long dreadlocks and uh, down to way down to the back of his middle of his back. But he was very, very kind to do this interview, and he was it was really good to watch. And he was saying to the to the interviewer, "You have no idea if I got if I could pay, be paid a nickel for every time someone asked me to say." Goldie Wilson uh, to, to say that line. He said, "I'd be a millionaire, but I'm not." <laughs> but to this day, he does uh, Back to the Future um, get-togethers, uh, autograph sessions, and all that stuff. He's he's cashing in on this because he had a minor little bit part, and he is world famous for this for this scene. But good news for him is if he walks down the street in most towns, no one will know who he is uh, unless they find out, you know, through a a link who that actually is that you're talking to. Quite a fascinating story, but here's a guy, you know, it will forever be associated with this line from this movie, iconic as it was, unbelievable. I, I did love that show. Uh, uh, let's see here, uh, Cool Jazz saying, actually, and it's evening here. I had a great day, happy Friday to you. Um, uh, let's see here, um, uh, 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 Robert Brandt, uh, people just need to see what uh, be, be, being neglected here, and then they will be screaming uh, how bad it is down there. Seakeeper, rocks sticking out of the water at low tide. An island. If you can sit a uh, Barbie doll on it, it's an island. That's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, cool Jazz uh, saying it's an evening. Uh, Robert Brandt, uh, that could be it. Uh, Ann Jordan, uh, time zones, lots of time zones. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Seakeeper, Maggie Smith admitted not watching Downton, Downton Abbey. She was in it. Why would she watch it? My 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 wife was appalled. She was appalled. How dare she not watch her own work? <laughs> Robert Brand, how old is everyone in here? Uh, I'll start. I'm 55. He's saying cool jazz trivia tonight. Name all the cruise movies, uh, Tom Cruise movies. And Jordan, 43 on the 5th of August. Robert Brand, thanks, uh, and Jordan. Rob, can you imagine all the mashed, smashed plates? Can you imagine all the smashed plates? The smashed plates. Uh, what are you talking about to have all the smashed plates? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Seakeeper, 63, going on 15. Wendy McDougat, 46 on the 26th of this month. Happy birthday, Wendy. Coming up, Robert Brandt. Uh, thanks, Seakeeper. Tom Henry, success. Uh, I just installed a new doorbell, which was my first uh, Trotting with Bruce Amazon link purchase, and it's working. Westminster Chimes, that's good news for me because it's not going to be returned. Yay! And Jordan, uh, happy Leo birthday at Wendy McCullough. Uh, Wendy saying thank you, and uh, Kathleen Krieger, 65, young. I'm 62, going to be 63 in September. Uh, we're all in that ballpark. Uh, we're all we're all getting up there. Um, let me see what other info I have for you guys. Uh, Singapore has no tractors. There are no tractors in Singapore. 
because the entire country is an urban city. Uh, there are no, no farms. How about that? Uh, New York uh, City is further south than Rome. Did you know that? You wouldn't think that, would you? Uh, New York is further south than Rome, Italy. Wow. Um, let's see here. The Greeks, Rob saying the Greeks, all those crash plates, I guess. Uh, Richard C. donated to Latin America and Caribbean Fund to help Haiti, to help them rebuild their island. What a, what a mess uh, down there. Robert Brandt sounds like we are all a key demo for cruising. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> Tom Henry laughing out loud. Mission Impossible, one, two, three, four, five, six on the way. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Tom, Tom Cruise movie, uh, Mission Impossible, one, two. Right, 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 right. Uh, yeah, there will be no Tom Cruise trivia tonight. Sorry. Uh, Tom Henry, 58 here. Right on, Tommy. You're the kid. Seakeeper, uh, Greeks yelling, Opa, and breaking plates. Love it. <laughs> yes. Um, did you know every 60 seconds this happens? 56 pieces of luggage go missing every 60 seconds. Uh, over 2,174 people arrive in a foreign country every 60 seconds. And over $250,000 is spent by Americans traveling abroad every 60 seconds. That's how many there are traveling abroad. I don't know how you come up with this stuff. I, where, do you, where do you come up with these kinds of stats? It's incredible. Uh, Robert Brandt, they charge for the plates. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually my luggage. It's usually my luggage that goes missing. He's saying, Tracy Dunlap at Robert Brandt. Uh, so you're so right. We helped to get a whole plane load of pets, animals out. Took us two months to go through the hoops. By the time we got the uh, dogs uh, that were taking, they, they were so skinny to get them out of. They were just starving, these poor things. Unbelievable. Uh, you're talking third world, people. You're talking third world. You would be appalled if you went to uh, certain areas in Asia. You would be appalled. And, of course, uh, some of the other Caribbean islands, uh, some of them in South America, not faring much better. It's um, it's a different land in, than our hometown. It really is. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, what's one? I have one more. One more for you. 64,640 selfies are taken every minute in the world. 64,640 selfies are taken every minute on this planet isn't that something that's a lot of selfies robert brandt most of the caribbean is poor you are correct sir it is uh even in the cayman islands uh we're living there we were down there for what almost two years and uh we saw parts of the island where the folks trimming the hedges live the folks who mowed the lawns that's where they live the the uh the husband and the wife each had a job. He worked as a hedge trimmer, and she worked as a uh, um, hotel room cleaning uh, maid. Uh, and combined, they, they both had $10 an hour jobs each. And uh, living on an island like the Caymans, it's incredibly expensive. They were there on a work permit from Jamaica. They were allowed to work there for two years, and then they had to go home. And so they would be renting uh a one bedroom something and in some cases they were renting uh, one bedroom uh you know shacks or uh houses that were tiny and just unkempt and uh no lawn to speak of i mean it would be just terrible if they drove a car it was a beater an absolute beater they bought for 500 bucks and had they how they kept it going i wouldn't know um the third world was evident uh even in our neighborhood um uh, in the Caymans, which was a, you know, fourth richest banking center in the planet. Uh, folks making millions a year. Um, many people that I knew uh, that I run into there are making 200, 300,000 a year. Um, I didn't last down there long enough to make that kind of money. I found that after a year, I was kind of done with it uh, because I didn't mind. I didn't mind the work I did. I just didn't like the company I was working for. And I found that uh, I could uh, do what I did as a consultant. Uh, but I also realized, Bruce, you don't have to live here to be an offshore consultant. You can be an offshore consultant anywhere you want to live. Because I had the banking connections in the Caymans, the accounting, the legal. I had made all those connections with professionals who were there for years and years and years. They're the ones making the money. Um, and I didn't need to be there physically to deal with them. I could deal with them with faxes, emails, and telephone calls. And so. Uh, uh, that's how I ended up in uh, Palm Desert, California, uh, living there uh, and doing my business offshore. Fantastic. Lovely. Just fantastic. But yeah, different world. The third world. Wow. 
what do we got here? Uh, uh, hang on, hang on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. A couple more folks coming through here. Who counted the selfies being taken? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, have you ever seen the missing luggage area in Miami? Wow, what a mess. Um, Robert Brand Caymans are maybe the rare exception overall. Wendy McCullough, how can that be calculated? Laughing out loud, the selfies. Wendy Thompson, 59 next year. I'll be 59. Tracy Dunlop, 56 here. Robert Brandt, limited middle class. Yep. Cool jazz. And Bermuda might be the exception. Yeah, Bermuda. There's wealth there too. Yep. Uh, Robert Brandt, yes, also Bermuda. Uh, in Nassau has its ups and downs, has its good and bad. Uh, you know, let's see, Robert Brandt, but some island uh, fool the system with average income. That's right, Robert. That's true. Richard C. Story out on the conditions in San Francisco showing how bad the streets are getting, like third world countries. Some of their conventions are starting to cancel shows because how bad it's gotten. Uh, sea keeper, I don't, uh, I don't take selfies. I'm not a narcissistic, narcissistic. I don't have a narcissistic point in me. Uh, Robert Brent, uh, not a selfie guy. I think that's uh, the 30 and under crowd. Uh, Paul Wilgus, me either. Sea keeper, I don't like taking selfies. I look in the mirror and go, okay, that's enough. <laughs> that's that's enough. Hi, Dad. I'm uh, looking at myself. Going, Hi, Dad. Yeah, I see you. Uh, lots of fun. Lots of fun. Um, yeah, the third world and the Caribbean and uh, Central America. Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, um, Costa Rica, parts of Panama. Talking tough times. Uh, it's uh, not easy. Uh, definitely not easy. Wendy, I used to think that people with no friends took their own picture before taking selfies became popular. Laugh out loud. Tom Henry, Sanctuary City caused the San Francisco mess. Should we clean it up or just send all the illegals there? We, we, we will need to find another home for Star Fleet Headquarters. Uh, and then Robert Brandt, where is MG Toe with the fake alcohol complaint? I, I don't know. I don't know where he is. Uh, Robert Brandt, where is MG Toe? Uh, Robert Brandt, I and my family count ourselves very blessed. I, I'm sure I counted myself blessed too in, in the Cayman uh, because I had a guaranteed salary from my employer and we were able to budget it through and uh, you know we, we got by. But when we left the island, we were not wealthier by much uh, than when we got there. We had a little bit of money, but really uh, by the time you settle into a, a new country, a new place, and you pay your first month's damage deposit and first month's rent and deposit for electricity and uh, getting your phones, and the money's all gone. It's all gone to keep existing, in other words. That's just the way that is. Uh, uh, Robert Brandt, um, very blessed. Cool jazz, please. No MG toe today. Laugh out loud. Tom Henry, maybe MG was pickpocketed and lost his phone. I, I don't know. He could be watching and not commenting. It's all good. Uh, cool jazz, laughing out loud. Um, Rob Sauter, wife and daughter went to Iceland. No baggage when they got there because airline needed the room for import products. Luggage came on the next flight. How about that? Uh, unbelievable. Um, kind of funny how that works sometimes. Uh, we've had that happen to us. Uh, my wife and I would fly and, you know, that luggage isn't there. And then they deliver it six hours later to the hotel and uh, it will eventually arrive. Cool, Jess. I'm thinking MG owns the, his own cruise ship. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I can't say. <laughs> I'm Mr. Neutral. Robert is laughing out loud. Seakeeper, not naming anyone here, but some participants can be irritating at times, you say. Uh, wow, Rob, thinking about going to Iceland. Uh, <laughs> How about that? Uh, yeah, I did read something interesting about, about travel, though. That This I just popped in my head when you said Iceland. It just popped in. I read a story yesterday about how affordable, uh, incredibly affordable, you can fly from certain cities in the United States to Paris and to London and other European cities. Um, uh, for the heck of it, I, I took a look today on, on the web to see how much it would have cost to fly from New York to Paris or London and return flights. Uh, Canadian, uh, well, American dollars, around 500, 550 American nonstop return flights. Uh, I was surprised at that. But then I noticed, well, yeah, who's offering these flights? It's Wow Air, Norwegian Air, these new upstarts. Um, it's, uh, it's quite an interesting change. Uh, of course, the legacy carriers, carriers like London, uh, United, and American Airlines, and, and, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, United, American, and who's the other one? Uh, it'll come to me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the legacy carriers have, some planes have four classes of, uh, of passengers. And so you've got first class, business class, premium economy class, and economy class. And now there's, uh, there's another one uh, where they have the business class as the best, premium economy, economy, and then stripped down steerage economy. 
Um, whereas in the Norwegian Airlines case, the Norwegian Airlines, uh, they only have two classes. They have their business class and their, their economy or their premium economy and economy. Um, and they're offering flights at such a cheap price. Now, by the time you pay for a baggage fee and then you order a bite to eat and you order a drink, maybe, you know, maybe you're up to upwards of 600, but you're still well under a thousand dollars for a return trip, uh, to Europe and back this summer. That's incredible. Cause normally during the summertime, you can't, uh, you can't get, uh, in the summertime, a flight for under a thousand bucks, generally speaking. Um, you'd have to do a one stop or sometimes a two stop to get those kinds of deals. I was quite surprised at that. I did take a look at uh, Los Angeles to London, and uh, I still found flights, uh, you know, under a thousand. Um, I found, uh, in some cases though, like uh, like uh, say Chicago to Frankfurt, you couldn't get a super deal there. Um, you'd have to do a two step flight. No, di no directs cheap, but you could get to Frankfurt cheaper if you flew to Reykjavik and then over or you flew to Helsinki and over, or Dublin and over. Uh, so it all depends on your, your timing and your, your, uh, your appetite for a connecting flight, or if you can build a connecting flight into a couple of day layover, what's wrong with that? Uh, two day layover in Dublin, what's wrong with that? Uh, explore Dublin for a couple of days and then fly to wherever you want to go in Europe and not make it a long 13 hour ordeal and you know maybe miss your flight, maybe not miss your flight from the connection. But uh, yeah, I noticed that today. Very uh, yesterday and today, I read this up. Quite interesting. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Richard. Um, uh, here we go. Sorry, uh, Robert Brand. I'm not naming names either. Cool Jazz. Uh, MG might be the reason cruise stocks are down. Robert Brand. We all need to find what we have in common and not have differences. Tom Henry. Cool Jazz. A small ship with no cr crowds. Richard C. I think Wow had a special from Boston to Iceland, then to the mainland, like three ninety nine return. Yeah, they do come up with these sales from time to time. Sea Keeper. Uh, if we all gained five pounds, we would uh, we could be closer to each other. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, Wes Morrison, I heard that JetBlue is looking at flying to Europe. Interesting. Uh, Richard C., I'm waiting for the uh, time you have straps coming down from the roof uh, of the plane and fly standing. They can really pack them in. I don't think so. Uh, Tom Henry, no way. I need to lose about 30 pounds. Uh, it's cool, Jazz. Love JetBlue. Tracy Dunlop, I do agree with UC Keeper. I'm a positive person and negativity drives me crazy. Tom Henry, we just need to find the one who cannot be named positive thought. <laughs> <laughs> Give positive thoughts. Well, we do the best we can with what we have, and we kind of go from there. Uh, but everyone is a, is entitled to their opinion. Thirty thumbs ups, one thumb down, and uh, you know, not bad today. Thank you very much for that, you guys. Um, yeah, the flying game. Um, I took a look today at a video that I saw um, about uh, how Emirates, Emirates, Emirates Airlines or Airways, they were uh, uh, doing a, a refurbishment of a 777 aircraft. They are the largest operator of 777 airplanes in the world. They have more Boeing 777s than anybody else. And I noticed uh, uh, in, in this video, they have uh, they were mentioning they have 10 uh, 777-200s that they are looking to refurbish. And uh, the plane as it is has a first class, a business class, and an economy section. And they've decided that these 10 particular planes are going to be refurbished with only business class and economy class. But everything new, including the ceilings, the, the right, they stripped it right down to the floor. And uh, they were putting in new electronics, new lighting, uh, and new galleys, everything. I mean, when they stripped this plane, uh, only the cockpit was kept intact. Everything else was redone. And they have a video about it. It was quite fascinating to watch. It was a, it's a, an average of 15 million per plane, $150 million budget to refurbish these aircraft. And uh, they showed the, uh, the uh, fast footage, you know, the time-lapse photography of how they did it and how they showed what it looked like before and then what it's looking like after. And they were showing the business class section, which is highly upgraded. It, they use. These business class sections blow me away today. Not, not even first class did First class didn't look like this 15, 20 years ago. It just didn't. But now this business class that's now normal business class uh, is unbelievable. It, it's really beyond what first class ever was. I remember business class 20 years ago, 30 years ago, is what premium economy is now. It's just a wider seat. That's all it was. Because um, in those days, everybody got a hot meal anyway, whether you're an economy or not. But uh, maybe business class, you had a choice. Today, oh my gosh, the entertainment systems, the live flat beds, uh, the storage. 
uh, all the amenities that you get. It's just amazing. Anyway, this plane was a real neat thing to see. They said that the first plane took them 55 days to refurbish. The second plane, they're down to 35 days. And they think they can get it faster because now as each plane gets done, they figured out all the glitches. They figured out what to look for. They figured out how to speed things up, how to do things outside of the plane with some of the seating, then bring it in all done up and then just plug it in and bolt it in and away you go. Quite interesting to see the before and after. So you get a chance. So the Emirates folks, uh, they make some pretty neat uh, videos. They're on YouTube. And you can see these refurbishment videos of the A380s, the 777s. It's something. It's really amazing. Uh, let's see, uh, um, uh, 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 SRPA, who, 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 okay, do you want to have your own mega yacht, as SAPA is asking, uh, who, who, uh, let's see, who the thumb, oh, is, Robert's asking, who gave us a thumbs down, uh, Tom Henry, my sense of humor rubs the wrong way, Facebook didn't like my Norwegian cruise, I ship puns, at least streaming, at least steaming bean enjoyed it, <laughs> Robert Grant smiling. Rob Stoddard, you can swim between North America and European continental plates in Iceland. Uh, interesting. Cool jazz. Uh, Elvis plane is still on the market. Mm, interesting. Tom Henry, S uh, S R Spa S R P A. Even if it was a gift, I would not afford the fuel. Robert Brand, Brand yeah, fuel. Yeah, Tom, exactly. Cool jazz. Uh, saying I, Robert Brand, I have a small boat and it's pricey for fuel. I'm sure it is. Uh, mega yacht would be incredibly expensive to have. About 10% of the cost of a yacht is what you need to spend to keep it going. So with the twenty thousand dollar yacht, it's two million a year. If it's a two hundred million dollar yacht, it's twenty million a year. You are paying dearly to keep these running in top condition. Otherwise, they deteriorate because the seawater eats it alive. Every facet of it. Um, cool jazz. Are you required to wear a seatbelt when you're laying down? Um, well, they they recommend it as a good idea, just to you know kind of have it over you because if you hit an air pocket, uh, would be a good idea to have that. Um, Tracy Dell, I've got to run, but see you all later. Robert Grant, it's a hole in the water, he's saying. Interesting. Uh, the, the, the difference between the Can America plate and the European plate. Incredible. That would be something to see. Uh, what do we got here? 613 is the time. I'm back on in an hour and 47 minutes. Uh, Tom Henry, we had an employee who had a nice boat. Could not believe his gas cost just for a day uh, river outing. Ouch. Uh, and Jordan is saying, see you at Tracy Dunlop at Trivia. Folks, I'm going to be back on in an hour and 45 minutes for Trivia tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern. Please join me then. In the meantime, thank you for all the thumbs ups that I've been given today. 33, I appreciate that very much. And thank you for your support. Um, got my, uh, got a, uh, got this fantastic gift card in the mail from Tom Henry from, for uh, Costco. Thank you so much, sir, for that. And a special shout out and thank you uh, to, uh, excuse me, to uh, Robert uh, Robert Brandt uh, sending me a, a donation on my PayPal channel. Thank you, Robert, so much for that. I do appreciate that. Uh, every bit helps, I'll tell you. I do, uh, I do uh, count the pennies. And uh, Costco is in my immediate future on, uh, looks like Saturday. I think it's gonna, we're going to head to Costco after the show. I'll be on tonight at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern for trivia. I hope a bunch of you can pop by and say hi for that. If you know anyone who would enjoy it, tell them to watch and participate. Uh, it's always a good time. And uh, we'll see you from there. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today on July the 5th, 2018 on Traveling with Bruce. I'll see you on this show tomorrow at 5 o'clock for the Friday edition, Traveling with Bruce, 5 o'clock. But uh, the next show will be uh, in an hour and 40-odd minutes. Prime time Thursday night trivia, Traveling with Bruce. I'll see you guys there and be there or be square. Thanks again for your support. I'll see you soon, guys. Take care. Bye for now.